Hey everyone, I'm Aliyah Jasmine. I'm an environmental journalist based here in Los Angeles. If you're watching this, you are probably familiar with some of my work. I'm here in the heart of mountain lion territory. And if you live in LA, you've probably heard the stories of the mountain lions that live um, There is a huge intellectual gap happening right now uh, between the people who work in the environmental world and in science and with mainstream media. Uh, and I feel like I belong in both. Of course, for many years, I worked as a sports reporter, an entertainment reporter, a talk show host. I did my master's thesis on the link between wildlife and human health. So I think I'm in a very unique position right now to see that there is a missing narrative happening. And we are not talking enough about the fact that COVID-19 is a zoonotic disease. This is a virus that started from our close proximity with wildlife. And to understand that more, I could not think of a better person uh, to bring on to my channels than Paul Hilton. He is a very well-known conservation photographer. You are probably familiar with his work, even if you don't know it, if you've seen the documentary Racing Extinction. Just about everything endangered in the world is for sale in China. Look at this stuff. Endangered, highly endangered, highly endangered. The more illegal it is, the more you have to go to the back rooms. We're definitely not welcome here. Oh my gosh. Most of that footage is his. Um, he also is a consultant uh, to the wildlife trade. So he is joining me from self-quarantine all the way across the world. Welcome, Paul Hilton. Yeah, nice to be here. And uh, yeah, it's great to be speaking to you across the world. So Paul, I want to get to the link between wildlife and COVID-19, but before we get there, let's take a couple steps back. For a lot of people who aren't familiar with the illegal wildlife trade, you have worked both in plain sight and undercover in these uh, wet markets in China, in these illegal wildlife markets. For people who don't know what a wet market is, can you kind of paint that picture for us? It's a good point that you bring up. I just assume everybody knows what's going on in the situation. And I, I sometimes forget um, how how I'm so entrenched into this work that I just assume people know. So yeah, the, these markets, you just walk into these big sort of dark uh, warehouses full of just cage after cage, different species after the species. You've got domestic animals, you've got wild animals all stacked on top of each other and um, it's just something like out of a medieval scene that you just you just wouldn't realize that these places still exist and um, I covered these markets in early 2002 during the SARS outbreak um, where that virus was connected to civet cat and then people started to realize how serious this was Chinese government decided then they were going to shut these markets down, but it lasted maybe six months. And here are, here we are again. It's scary that how like history is just repeating itself. Paul, you have photographed your fair share of pangolins. What is a pangolin? What is the demand? Like, why are they being sold in these illegal markets? And who is buying them? Pa pangolins, particularly, they've been sought after for their scales. Um, they've a lot of the market traders have pushed this product out to be a cure for anything from asthma all the way up to cancer. But basically, it's the same material as, as you see my thumbnail? It's the same material as that. That scale is the same as, you know, if you're going to consume these pangolin scales, you may as well just eat your own fingernails because it's the same product. And the demand has just, just been huge. It's been skyrocketing for the last decade. I've covered um, bus where there have been four or five thousand pangolins in one bus in shipping containers. In Vietnam, you could actually get um, uh, pangolin scales and sort of like in your health insurance. It was sort of up until recently, pangolins were mainstream. And then so you've got the scales being used for traditional Chinese medicine, but then you've got the meat, the exotic meat market where, you know, um, rich and famous people are consuming these these um, animals and and pangolins can go anywhere from eight to nine even a thousand dollars a kilo in some restaurants wow so in terms of where things rank in the illegal wildlife trade how high up the list are pangolins it's the most highly traded mammal across the world today and has been for many years 
more than rhinos, more than an ivory. And so why don't they get as much attention as the elephants and the rhinos and the tigers? Why are more people not talking about them and paying attention to them in the mainstream? I think I think a lot of people just don't know what a penguin is. I, it's really, you know, all the, the, the big exotic animals, the rhinos, the, the tigers, the elephants, people know about them. The pangolins are uh, sort of, yeah, the, the, the forgotten um, scaly anteater that people just just don't know about it. And, and the, the big sort of tagline is like, this species is going to go extinct before people even know about it. And it's an amazing little animal. It, it, it sort of curls up in a ball, it's its only defense. And um, yeah, poachers just come along, pick it up, put it in a bag, it's that simple. I think that's a really interesting point that I'm going to repeat for people. That is their only defense. They don't fight back or bite back. They literally just curl up in a ball as their defense. Well, it looks like a big artichoke and it just curls up and that's it. To, to most, that's you know, natural, uh, you know, tigers, they can't actually penetrate the, the, the armor. Once, once the pangolin rolls up in that ball, they can't actually get at it. So they'll just sort of try and manhandle it while, and then just leave it, but, but that's it. But in, it, poachers just come along, pick them up, put them in bags, and use dogs to track the pangolins. So let's talk about this link between the pangolin, which you have worked extensively covering, and COVID-19, this global pandemic that we are all now dealing with. What is that link? Well, the, I, if you go back in history, all the major virus, the, the pandemics, it's come from of, of animals and wildlife. And 90% of the time, it's the way we've managed and treated them. Um, you go right back to um, the avian flus and then um, swine flu, SARS, and, and now COVID-19. It's, it's basically the mistreatment of animals, the industrial farming of animals. And now, obviously, all these wet markets have become almost industrial in scale because uh, the volume of animals that are coming through and the way they're, they're sort of housed, where they're stacked, the way they're literally on top of each other, where you've got them all defecating on each other. And you've got all these animals in such a tight place, a small compact area, and you've got humans coming in, chopping heads off chickens, chopping heads off ducks, rabbits, dogs, cats, pangolins, civet cats. You name it. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, these zoonotic diseases, when you look back in history, even HIV, Ebola, I mean, these are all diseases that humans contracted in one way or another from wildlife. Um, and nobody is really talking about the pangolins, which interestingly enough, are one of the lead suspects when it comes to uh, the transmission of COVID-19 to humans. So that being said, uh, it is not 100% proven yet uh, if I am and you correct me if I'm wrong and there is also a component that has to do with bats so can you kind of explain that to us they found in I think it was in Yunnan province which is on the eastern side of China they found these bats are carrying several kinds of coronaviruses and they've they've made a, a something like a 90 96 percent link with with a coronavirus housing those bats um, and I think from the bats it's jumped into a pangolin, we, they have a 91% match. There is um, unconfirmed cases of a 99% match, but it's still not confirmed, that report. Um, so somewhere between a bat and a pangolin to a human, uh, the transmissions happen. And you can imagine these bats, this colony of bats, are, say in a cave in the middle of nowhere, and a pangolin's just coming along, eating termites and ants, what they do. And it's, it's just picked up the virus moving under a bat, bat colony. And it's 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 carried that that virus, and it, obviously this a poach has come along, grabbed this pangolin, put it in a in a sack off the market. It goes. And you mentioned this being a 91% match, right? Now the difference between it being a 91 and a 99% match, that 8%, although it sounds small, is a very big percentage, right? It's still quite a grey area whether it is the pangolin, but at the moment everything is pointing to the pangolin. Um, yeah, I think 99, that 9% 9 is huge actually, but yeah. it's a crucial thing we've got. And right now, um, we've got the wet market in Wuhan, um, they're all being sold there. In a way, to me, it's, 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 it's this actually might save the pangolin. People might start leaving them alone. 
because they're on the edge of extinction anyway. So, so just announced is that China is going to fully or temporarily close down um, something like 20,000 of its wildlife farms. You've mentioned that you have seen firsthand uh, China announce that they are going to do something like this before and then it hasn't stuck. So what are you and your colleagues saying about this announcement of China? Taking right now, yeah, China, China is saying they're going to shut down the, the wildlife um, farms and markets, but it's too early to say. Um, at the moment, I, I'm, I'm hopeful. That's, that's all we can be right now. It seems that while CNN is reporting that China is announcing they're going to close down 20,000 of these wildlife farms, uh, Nat Geo is at the same time reporting that uh, although China is making these announcements, they only apply to the consumption of live food from these wildlife markets. Where there is a huge loophole is when it comes to Chinese medicine, which is still going to be allowed, right? In the press just this week, um, we've read about uh, them offering or promoting bear bile, farm, bear bile mm -hmm. injections to cure COVID-19. I'm just gonna stop you there because I find this extremely shocking, but for people out there who don't know what bear bile is or how exactly it is extracted, I know that you have done a lot of work photographing this happening. Can you explain to the people what bear bile is? Bear bile farming is, is one of the most cruel practices I've ever seen. Um, they take these Asiatic bears, stunning animals, and they put them in these, these they call them crusher cages. And you have this beautiful bear stuck in these cages and, and they literally can't move. Some of them have been in these cages for over 10 years. And what they do, they have a different, they have, um, they basically put catheters in, like a 16 steel catheter, into their gallbladder and drain bile from them. Some of them are- Bile, they're alive. While they're alive, and they're in these cages for year after year after year, and they're all going insane. They're riddled with cancer, and they're literally dripping bile, or they put these steel catheters, and they can put a, 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 a syringe in with a needle and actually extract it on, on a daily or weekly basis from these bears. And I've been into bear farms, and you've got 50 or 60 bears all in cages. I think something like 10,000 bears still in captivity in these bear farms across China. It's it's beyond cruel. It's 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 just so wrong on so many levels. Right, and according to this reporting by Nat Geo, uh, that bear bile would fall under Chinese medicine uh, because they are saying that it is actually a cure for COVID-19. Right? And and yeah, it's looked upon as a health product. I think it's very important to point out that this doesn't start and end in China. Indeed, the United States is one of the top buyers of products from the illegal wildlife trade, right? Yeah, the, the, the global wildlife trade, obviously China is the biggest driver, but the US is second in line. There's so much demand in the US, uh, especially for the exotic pet trade, and people think, oh, it's okay to keep this, you know, this primate or this lizard or this reptile. But it's just another loophole for the, the, the remaining last wild population of this species to come into the trade. Um, you've got safari parks, you've got the zoos. Um, they're all implicated. Without biodiversity, people go, oh, it doesn't matter if the pangolin goes extinct. How does that affect me? Well, each species creates, you know, services and creates ecosystems that sustain all of life. And we need biodiversity yeah. for these things to keep functioning. Um, it's all connected, right? right? And, and people really need to understand that when we lose a species, we're one step closer to our it demise. Us. So every species is so critical right now. Chinese virus. To call it the Chinese virus is so, it's so wrong because basically just is creating the whole us and them when you can see how connected we are. You can look at the virus, look how fast it's spread across the globe. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens in China affects the rest of the world. We just witnessed it. You know, and if, if, if we're cutting down trees in the Amazon, it's gonna affect all of us. We're polluting the ocean here, you know, in Australia, or the Great Barrier Reef is dying. It's a problem for everybody. And once people can actually start to grasp that, then we can go forward. Because it's not us and them, we're here. We're all in this boat together. And if it starts to sink, we're all going. It's not they're going, we're all going. It's that black and white, it's that straightforward. 
for more information on wildlife and COVID-19 and uh, my interview with Paul, uh, as well as links to his work, uh, please head to aliajasmine.com and I have a full article there with all of the resources that you might be looking for. Uh, it's also a link in my Instagram bio.